the market doesn't love you. It will seduce you, okay? It will make you feel good for a few minutes. It will rub your belly and tell you everything is okay. But at the end of the day, when the market is angry, it's gonna spit you out, chew you out, and throw you away with the SDS garbage. Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody, and uh, welcome to uh, another edition of uh, the AccessToTrader.com nightly wrap-up show. Hope everybody is uh, doing well. Usually, um, I take uh, Thursday nights off to kind of recharge the brain. Uh, I took yesterday off. There was no video yesterday. I had this crazy migraine yesterday. Crazy action all over the place. Everything's flying around. Incredible value, uh, and just kind of wore me out. So I took yesterday off, and today, you know, I'm kind of back. Uh, back on my, um, uh, back in the saddle. And, you know, today should have been a, a discussion about, you know, Tesla earnings, uh, Apple earnings, uh, the Facebook quarter, right? The continuous really good action uh, in a bull market. You know, the Dow was up 300 points today. The NASDAQ was up, oh, what, 90 points or so, right? Excellent. Everything is great. Investors are happy. The brokers are happy. Everybody's happy. The problem is, it's not that right. And you know, without I'm sure everybody knows by now. You know what is going on. Um, years ago, just to kind of quickly, quickly break this down. Years ago, I did several interviews. Right, uh, I did one with the Lucci Group. I did a couple. Right, and uh, for years and years and years, I, I've I've constantly got uh, emails. Would you like to come on that bliss platform and that platform? And I I've always respectfully kind of declined because I've always maintained the fact that talking about trading and talking about, you know, the, the industry itself doesn't interest me. Okay. Um, when you go through what I went through, especially for the two years back in 2001 and 2003, that I didn't make any money. I had these, all these really psychological walls and, you know, and, and all I did was, you know, think about suicide. It was a very dark period of my life. The whole business, it, it, it made me dark. It made my whole soul. And you can hear by even, even the way I'm talking about it now. I, I had a, a really disgraceful opinion about this whole industry, just the way uh, it made me feel. And a lot of people, you know, for years and years and years, when they especially get into this industry, they're all happy and they're all aggressive and they're all uh, optimism. I love trading. Is it Monday yet? And all that stuff happens until you finally start seeing the ugliness and the dark side of this industry. Uh, and it really does start to affect you. And, you know, without going into every major detail, you can literally uh, go on 30,000 different blogs tonight and everybody will give you uh, their opinion. But you saw and you see exactly the disgusting aspect of what Wall Street really is. OK. And, you know, everybody rode the wave of this whole uh, GameStop and all these other companies that kind of ran with it, the KOSSs of the world and the AMCs and the Kias and everything kind of in between. And that was great, right? And we talked about this um, a couple of videos ago, ago. And I said, this is fantastic because the little guy finally got the piece of the pie, right? They, they finally got a seat at the table. They carved up a piece of the pie and they actually took a taste. And everything was great and all until Wall Street realized, well, wait a minute, this is all great, but now it's, it's coming on our dime. And what really shows you, and it really is disgusting to kind of think about and talk about, is Wall Street's basically telling you, you're allowed to succeed, right? In any aspect of this business, you are allowed to be as great as possible as long as you don't disrupt the establishment, okay? As long as you don't make us uncomfortable, as long as the game is still in our favor, go out and make millions of dollars, Go out and make $50, $100, $100 million, whatever the case may be, as long as you know your place, as long as you realize you're still at the kids' table, and if the grown-ups get upset, there's going to be ramifications. You're going to be straight sent to your room. And what you saw today was incredibly despicable. I mean, absolutely despicable. And it really does show you 
how the whiny crybabies and the billionaires and their and the uber you know hundreds of millions of dollars of net worth individuals they got disrupted they got their pie eaten and now they want their revenge and what you saw today was just a cowardly act of all these online brokers and i forgot how many there were the robin hoods of the world and uh, the interactive brokers of the world basically telling you is, look, look, you can't buy these stocks anymore. You can't do it, right? Without telling you, without saying specific things, look, look, you're disrupting things, right? You made your money. We got it. You're allowed to make your money. But now there's, this is a big picture. People are not happy. People are sitting in the, sh in the shadows are not going to have it. Know your place, right? Understand your place. Go back into the corner where you belong. And when you started seeing the establishment rise up today, it really did show you the darkest part of Wall Street. And it's despicable and it's terrible. And it really does show you who's in charge or who at least they believe is in charge. Because again, when you go back to the mortgage mess, okay, and banks were bailed out, where was the little guy that got bailed out? Where was the little guy that sold everything in the, in the March lows? Where was the little guy that lost their business because they couldn't reopen, right? During the whole COVID mess. Where is all this, right? But as soon as you start to get your head above water and finally get a little piece of that pie, they tell you go away. And this is a disturbing aspect. And unfortunately, what I've learned years and years and years ago, unfortunately, so many traders and so many new investors, they realize today, and so what I've been saying for years and years and years that I have discussed vomit pouring out of my mouth when people ask me to talk about trading and talk about investing and all that stuff in off hours, I always say there's nothing about interesting, there's nothing interesting or exciting, at least for me, about investing and trading and everything takes part. Because again, at the end of the day, the market doesn't love you. It will seduce you, okay? It will make you feel good for a few minutes it will rub your belly and tell you everything is okay. But at the end of the day, when the market is angry, it's going to spit you out, chew you out, and throw you away with really yesterday's garbage. And the moral of the story is, folks, I know a lot of people are disgusted tonight of what happened, right? You see all these different interviews with the CEO of Interactive Brokers, and one of the anchor people on CNBC asked them, I go, are you, you know, by halting trading in these securities that you can't buy these stocks anymore because basically people are short and they're they're trying to curb their losses you can only liquidate okay only liquidate long positions and she asked the, this the chairman of interactive brokers are you protecting yourself or are you protecting your the investor and you can you know google it i mean go on go on youtube i'm sure 30 you know thirty thousand people posted this his first reaction was yes we're protecting ourselves oh yeah i mean we mean the customer we're protecting the customer. We're protecting market structure. You said it. You're protecting yourself. And unfortunately, that is the disgusting part of this business. Okay. So the idea that everything's an equal playing field, don't get it twisted. The market doesn't love you. You shouldn't love the market back. Treat this market what it is. It's a job. Okay. Like anything else. Milk the cow. Right. No emotions. And get the hell out of Dodge. Because at the end of the day... The whiny babies that have been years and years and years and making money off these old analyst calls and all these, you know, all these different scenarios that take advantage of the retail public. As soon as the retail public got into the game, right, just got into the game for that one split second, Wall Street took their ball and then they went home. So unfortunately, it's a very, very dark day for Wall Street, uh, for the trading community, I think, as a whole. And there's nothing that these brokers can do right now to save face. You know, I know some of them after the close came out and said, well, you know, we're going to open up trading to some of the, you know, we're going to remove uh, limitations on some of these stocks, uh, you know, some of these stocks uh, going, you know, for tomorrow limited, but you know, we're going to, we're going to do our, it's all, it's all ruined. And again, guys, always look out for yourself. It's a business. You shouldn't have any high regards. Don't put it on a pedestal. Uh, it doesn't love you. Don't love it back. Again, be a professional. Take the market for what it's worth. Pillage it as much as possible. But at the end of the game, just know that it's you versus the market. And the market is not going to help you in any way. So at the end of the day, the only job of the market is to detach you from your money. And today was a perfect example. Other than that, you know, um, today was more of a muted session. 
compared to yesterday. Yesterday was a free for all, uh, ridiculous amounts of pivots. I, 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 what I liked about today's session, though, it was very methodical. Again, it was very methodical, very orderly. The pivots didn't come 100 miles an hour. You had one pivot here, another pivot came an hour from now. And you were able to really pick and choose their spots. Uh, some of the Bitcoin names really woke up, the BT, uh, BT, uh, BTBT of the world, the Maras of the world. Um, you had a lot of names, especially the silver names woke up, which, which was a crazy group to even think about waking up, but they did. Okay, they did. And what we saw today was a lot of uncertainty. Uh, beta is still hot garbage. We're waiting for, you know, that white knight to come on horseback. Just to save us, just save us. Again, I'm a beta trader and I've been trading per, per, you know, predominantly non-beta now for weeks, you know, for absolute weeks. And if you can squeeze out one beta trade, you know, every other day or so, you're like a pig in, in slop. Uh, but we're waiting, you know. So next week we have uh, Amazon, we have, you know, we have, you know, Google, we have, you know, so many of these beta names. Something has to give here, okay? Somebody has to save the mega cap uh, big cap names because right now the game is just all these alternative uh, names that are coming out with good volume. And if you do not adapt to what you're seeing uh, in the trading aspect right now, you're going to be sitting there, you know, playing with your thumbs and watching a really, really aggressive market uh, play out. Until then, you know, you either sit on the sidelines and complain that beta is not awake and it's not really uh, trading like it was two, three months ago, or you can kind of adapt to what you're seeing right now and try to take advantage uh, of the tape. So uh, let's talk about uh, the overall tape. Uh, nothing, again, nothing really to speak about. We had this big drawdown move yesterday. Uh, they held rising support. We know what the, you know, the, the short term uh, line in the sand is, right? This area right here, this 317 level uh, on the queues, well, that's kind of intermediate line in the sand, 317, and then it starts going down to this uh, 310 level. So until we start closing below this 317, you have to give the bulls the benefit of the doubt. That's kind of what this long-term chart uh, has been showing you. If you look at uh, the S&P, we're going to just use uh, the spies as, a pro uh, as kind of a proxy. That's a little bit of a different story. You know, yesterday we went through, we, we had a little bit of technical damage. They tried to get above, they gapped up the market into the five day moving average and it got denied. And this is the second close in a row below this trend line. So if you could, if you really have a bias going into tomorrow's session, you have to kind of be a little bit on the risk adverse side if you are trading the S&P exposure capital names, right? You have to kind of be on the lookout. You know, Tesla got rejected. It looked like it was about to rally today off of lows and it got rejected. Uh, Apple looked like it was about to go green in a day. It got rejected. Facebook, for example, had a really big run. And we'll talk about the individual pivots in a second. Had a really big run off the open, but it got rejected. So the market right now is at least giving you clues of what happens next. And especially in the SPY, the fact that we closed two days in a row below uh, this rising trend line is not good. It's just really, really not good. A lot of you guys are not going to feel it. And what we saw yesterday, nobody felt the market down 600 points. Nobody, because it was so much aggressive action. But if you start seeing a buyer strike, and, it, and what we try to do every single day is not to give out the panic signals. We're just trying to warn you of what potentially happens if channels start to confirm. So right now, the fact that we closed two days in a row below this rising wedge here, it's not good. Until we start confirming uh, this 372 level, you know, you have to be cautious. Uh, maybe take some exposure uh, off your books. Uh, this is a great trading environment, continues to be a great trading environment, uh, despite certain days that the market, like yesterday, was down, six, down, was down 650 points, the Nasdaq was down almost 300 points, and it was phenomenal action on the, on the upside. So you have to be very cautious. And again, the sky's not falling, nobody's running around like a chicken out of head talking about Armageddon, Armageddon, we're going to zero, but you have to be conscious of what potentially could happen next. So let's talk about uh, some pivots for today, um, Some a good spotted action. Um, you know, good spotted action. I traded a bunch of things today, uh, but VLDR, I really like, never confirmed. Uh, Ruby, this was a little too thin for me. Uh, broke out today, had a big initial move. Uh, 1480, 15 needs to build. Here was Ruby, right? Here's the initial move on Ruby. Took out that 1480, 15, went to 16 before a pretty aggressive 
uh, reversal with a, especially with a lot of names. Uh, CLDR I caught pretty nicely. Uh, 1650 got rejected twice. It needs to build. Here was CLDR, right? So here was a CLDR. Here was a 1650 rejected once, rejected twice. Uh, nice move to not a huge, but nice move into the 1620s. I still like it if the next couple of days it starts reclaiming uh, today's highs. Um, yeah, no trade on ARKO. Frog, I still like the 71 level. Uh, Facebook, here is Facebook, uh, 276, 75, 277 needs to build. There's a little bit of supply at 277 and a half, so be aware if it could reclaim 277.50, 278, then it has room to 283. Uh, sweet move on uh, Facebook. So here is, uh, here is Facebook today, and this is kind of all the action we were talking about. Here is the two, uh, 276 level. It got above the 280, uh, 280, 278 level and went all the way up uh, to 287 before a really pretty aggressive reversal. So for all you guys who caught that move, uh, great job there. NVIDIA, not a huge move, but experienced trader. There's a channel there, 524 uh, for a potential move, 529, 530. Here was uh, NVIDIA, right? So here was the 524 and it went right to uh, 530. So really nice move on NVIDIA there. Uh, as well, Apple, again, this was a big spot, and this is exactly where it got rejected, 142.30s, 142.50s. We have to watch that level kind of going forward. Uh, 283 on deck on Facebook. Uh, CLDR, take on the way up. FUBU, nothing. Guys, keep an eye on plug uh, for the next couple of sessions. Uh, it's held now four times. It's held four times 63 level. If it starts building that level, uh, the stock will get hit. They're defending that 63 line. Once it, they, they lose it and it starts to build below 63, it should get hit. Keep an eye on this uh, for the future. BT to BT was, was beautiful. Uh, 1850 needs to build. Here was 1850 needs to build. We, we've been speaking about BTBT BT, uh, for, you know, for a while now. I caught this trade pretty nicely. It stopped at supply after the close. It's trading uh, near the highs around 2050s, 2080s. I still like it tomorrow. If this thing starts confirming, uh, especially at the top of the channel, keep this in mind. There's been $40 February call buys. We talked about this the last couple of days. Um, somebody's betting this thing's going to 40 in the next couple of weeks. So definitely, definitely keep an eye on this action. But uh, nice move today. Uh, as well, like I said, that was a nice move there. Uh, 1980s first supply, that's exactly what we got. Here's the 40 gallon call buyers. Uh, and that's it. So, interesting times, right, guys? Interesting times. Unfortunately, you know, you know, we really did see, uh, you know, the really ugly side of Wall Street. And unfortunately, for all you guys who are new to trading, it's better to see it now and take all these Wall Street schmucks off your 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 pedal still because again if you know if, if you don't if you don't give them any regard and take them from what face value you'll never be disappointed in them again guys god bless i love you all i'll see you tomorrow